It's my pleasure and actually privilege to introduce to you Ralph Martini, master gun maker. I've known him for decades and we're in his shop. And I just wanted to say a lot of people write me about a lot of guns and some people have a whole pile of guns for different types of hunting. Then other people like guns for the different mechanisms, bolt actions and so on. I'm probably one of those people because I generally don't get out the hunting that much or not as much as I'd like to. And then there's a third class of people that are at the, I would say, top level of gun ownership and they order custom rifles and the guns kind of transcend into an artwork with lasting value and high value. And Ralph is at that highest level of gun making and worked with Martin Hagen, of course, Martin Hagen moved to a better world. So we're here today and we'll cover some different subjects and I'll hand the floor over to Ralph shortly because I talk too much. I know a lot of people want to know how to assemble and disassemble the Hagen single shot, which is not difficult if you know what you're doing. So Ralph is going to walk you through that. I went out of my way to buy just about every type of falling block action. And it took me a while before I ran into the Hagen action and Martin Hagen and Ralph Martini. And if, in case you haven't watched my other videos on the Hagen action, this is without a doubt the best falling block action. And I don't usually deal in superlative statements, but it's quite true. However, many owners have trouble taking them apart and so on. So Ralph thought, let's make a video that mm. shows clearly how to do it. It's not difficult, but you have to know what's what. And then I'll hand the floor to Ralph and he can take you through exactly what to do. Okay, this is um, Hagen Action. It's the uh, Hagen MHK4, which means for uh, Martin Hagen Kochel am See. Like his name, Martin Hagen and Kochel am See, that's where he lived and that's where he invented it in around 19... 74, 1975. And the number four behind it, it is the uh, fourth generation because he made the first one, uh, he just made out of a block, then later on modified it, um, made it out of castings, and then uh, later on we machined them. Uh, or got the machine, CNC machine from, from, uh, from Knut um, uh, out of the uh, full bar stock, like out of the billet, which is way better. I took a little bit to convince him to do that, to get away from the old ways of the casting, which was a lot of work, hand work to uh, mill over it, file, shape, everything, and file even the, for the block and stuff. Uh, yeah, so anyways, um, we built rifles on those actions for many years. I joined Martin Hagen in 2000 when I came down from Fort St. John and I joined him. Then we made a, a couple runs of actions and stuff like that. And uh, what's so superb about this action is just like the simplicity, how this thing works. And it is so easy and simple, but very genius because it all works on pivot points, um, you know, uh, over centers. And there's a few little things I'll point out. Okay, so just want to show you a little bit like uh, the trigger here. Here is a safety hook and it's just a roller safety. And what I said before about pivot points, everything works on a pivot here. The safety is engaged like a very heavy hook, so no way you could pull the safety or it could go off. If you disengage the safety here, now it goes. And uh, this here, I'll just show you this, is a housing, a spring housing, and it's so simple, this um, system. Here, this is a flat that sits underneath here and you got actually a lot of engagement. And, on, on, and so when you pull this forward here, the trigger, then it releases and it goes up and this is connected to the hammer. The, on a lot of um, most guns, the pivot point from the trigger here where the pin is, is fairly similar with the length of this trigger shoe. But the sear is actually very close to here, right, on most conventional triggers. In the Hagen system, 
it's almost the distance from here is probably two thirds as long to the sear than to the bottom of the trigger. So, which means when you pull the trigger here, it um, moves, like it moves a lot, a little bit the movement you do here, you pull the trigger, the top moves a lot. So you can actually, when you pull, you release a lot of sear engagement. So the trigger will, will knock off. So you have, having said that, it has a heavy engagement, the, um, this piece here in the trigger. So it's very safe for shock and everything, not like something what could get knocked off very simple. That was just one of the little things I wanted to point out. So as you know, I, I've owned a few of these Hagen rifles and here's this beautiful action sitting here. And as usual, uh, you know, the first thing I notice is it's missing external screws. <laughs> this is not good news for someone like me because normally I like taking screws out and then parts start to fall, not on the Hagen. So we have the master here who's going to show us exactly how to take it apart properly and what tools make that possible and easier. So Ralph, once again, yes. it's for you. <laughs> okay. Well, when I disassembly the action, it's easy for me to work on it actually in the vise. So in order to put it in the vise, you can have your barrel screwed in or so, um, which I usually don't do because I do it all the time. So I made myself up studs for all different sizes of actions, medium, small, mini. And this one here is a small action. So I'll just screw that in. And I put a checkering riffle on it here so it holds better in the vise. And uh, here we go. So that is in now good. And now we'll start taking this puppy apart. Let's go. Huh? <laughs> okay, I um, have a little tool set here and it's basically just uh, pins, everything to push stuff out. So, um, very simple. This is all metric Martin Hagen's action. So it's like two millimeters, two and a half, uh, three and, and, and four millimeters. So I'll just have all of those. You can make them up from a, a by set of pin punches or make them up out a drill rod and harden them a little bit. I don't even need to be hardened. So we'll start taking it apart. So you always start on the trigger. So I'll open that action. And I just use this one here to get this pin from the trigger out. So I'll just push it through. All the holes are drilled and reamed, so they're not super tight. The pin slide in and out. Put the pin here. When you take it out, I put my thumb here because there's a little spring in here which could slip out, but uh, we made a, a press fit at the end that they usually don't. Uh, so I'll just pull the punch out, pull it out. And here you see uh, the little spring in here and it is tight a little bit at only at the end. So we'll put that here. Then in order here to get this apart now, we have to get the spring housing and the sear out. For that, I have um, two like this made out of an old screwdriver, turned in the lay smaller or get the right size, bent over with a torch, good enough. You could use a pin punch too, this is much easier. You just put it in here, push it forward, out it comes. So simple. A lot of guys struggle so much with all that. This is that spring housing. Here's the spring. Here's your, your sear, which is the flat here. When you assemble it, you have to make sure that um, that this is on top. If you have it like this, it just won't work. You will not wreck anything, but it just will not work. So here it's punched here, T, top, or sometimes they make with a file, put a little cut in it or something that you see this side I'm looking at, the right hand person taking it apart. So here we go. Now you see all this here. It's, um, you could take the safety out, but you don't have to. Um, let's take it out. Um, 
So here we go, you just push the punch out, the pin, and uh, move this back and do, you can take this out. There's just a wheel on a roller with this piece here. And here is the, um, the spring hook. Comes out too, you don't want to lose the spring or so. And, and here it is, that's a safety hook with a spring on it. You notice too, it goes on easy, it slides and the back is turned a little bigger. So it actually sits on here and doesn't fall on the floor so easy. All those little things Martin hang and thought about, just a genius that man um, absolutely was, yeah. Still is, so anyway, so now we'll do the main pin here. So that's uh, a four millimeter and uh, push that one out that is actually a little tighter than usually so then you just have to tap it a little bit it's not too bad usually they just reamed that uh, they fall out the back hole here is sometimes a little tighter here it's reamed clearance here is sometimes a little bit more interference fit take that out and here it comes out like this take it apart now you have to get this pin out of there because there is the chain link. So the way this puppy works is like this. Here's a chain link in there and the block with the pin, it holds this here. And that's how you pull the block down and you push it up with the force over here, over the cam and, and it push the block up. So anyways, so we'll lay this here now. Then to get the block out, there's a stop link in here. So the only way to pull it out is, uh, is through the top. So this is a three millimeter pin. So I have to change the ones here. The guide pins, put it out. Here's your stop link. And it's very uh, obvious how it goes in. Um, just look here as a cutout for the chain link where the chain link has to clear in here a little bit on, on function right here so that it's not in the way. So you can't really, if you turn it around, it won't go in, the pin won't go through. So we'll put this here. This is basically everything here. This is a Hagen action disassembled to this stage. We'll go and um, do the um, take this apart here. Very easy too. The hammer here is like this. They come out easy, the pins here. You want to put, uh, take the extractor out first. To push it out. And this extractor comes out, pin. And here is the little spring in here, what keeps this guy spring loaded upwards. I'll push that out, put the spring here, that's it. Now, um, if you want to do the block, I uh, usually go in another vise here right beside me, but that's okay. So it is, uh, the firing pin bushing is pushed in from the front and just held with this cross pin. So we'll have to get that out. And I like the guide pin because if I would let go, that thing would fly right out of there right now on the floor. So I'll take it out like this in here, I'll pull it out and you see the firing pin spring pushes it out already. Sometimes they are tighter and a lot of times guys will get, um, have a problem getting them out. So the way to get them out, if they're tight is, I've made myself out of drill rod, um, different sizes, just a little push pin. It's just made out of drill rod, bend, uh, and then I, I hardened it. I actually uh, hardened it in oil that it's a little harder. So you put this in here, hit the firing pin. I'll try to turn this around and show you. If you look in here, I don't know if you can see the firing pin. Might be really hard to see in the camera. Um, but it sticks out in here a little bit. So you have to hit that firing pin with a little tool I made up 
And in this case, I can just slide a push it, it'll come out. Or if it doesn't, you give it a little, uh, a little tap. Uh, and out it is. Uh, so that could f fly under four. So here you got the firing pin bushing, which is also, of course, heat treated. Firing pins are heat treated. Um, here's the spring on it. And you see how the, how the spring sits here. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll show you all of that later on the assembly. So this is basically it. The Hagen action is completely assembled. And after heat treating, you always, always pull that firing pin pushing out uh, before you heat it lo logically, because uh, if you don't, you can have a, they might seize in there, so and everything fries together. I know one guy, he, they heat treated it and they didn't take it out, so it was a big mess to get that out after. Uh, they EDM it and do everything. So now we'll put it back together. So I would start where we left off. We'll put this in here, the firing pin bushing. So I will go like this, a pin, then the spring over top. Look where the cutout is here for the cross pin. I'll turn that roughly where it is. I can push it in or tap it in. As I said, what's really nice is this guide pin here, if you put something like that. I got different ones, like with no taper on it, with a little taper on it here. This is a really long taper to find something. So for this, I'll actually use this guy here because it, I get the pin in easier. So. Put the pin in, it always pushes in. I'll uh, tap it in, this is it. Fully functional again, then uh, I think I would just start, well, we'll start with a block again. I put a support underneath here sometimes. I have those made different heights, this one, this one, but now I don't because it's probably a little easier to see without. So we'll put the block in from the top. The stop link in here and the cutout on the bottom, the milk part on top. You can use the guide pin here to find the hole like that again, or just don't. You can just go and um, do it. Let me see. Here we go. Couldn't find that pin here. And before we put this in, we have to assemble everything again. So I'll start with the, um, with the spring here. And it's a funny looking thing. Basically those two forks, they hold on the bottom here. And this, it has to be curled like this. And this is a spring load moving upward. So I'll put this in here, try to find again, see where I am here. Yeah, got it in. And you put that two millimeter pin in here. So that is in, and you see here the action of the spring uh, is like this. So now you just have to push the, uh, put the extractor in, line up the hole, and put the three millimeter pin in. I'm trying to do it without the guide pin. This is the action, what you want. You want it like this, that it works. Now the hammer is easy. Hammer here, chain link in here, that. The short four millimeter pin. Good. 
Good. Okay, now to put this together, you always want to make sure the chain link is pulled up, not down. Then you don't catch it with a guide pin. So you have to put it up and maybe in this position. You lower the block. You don't have to do it all the way down. You go like this and now you try to get this hammer in this cutout internally here. So you have to basically slide it in like this. And then sometimes I pivot a little bit and I pull the hammer backwards here so I know it's back. Then you lower the block. Now you have to find, you have to hit that chain link hole. And I think I just hit it. If you don't hit it, uh, you have to look, take it out, but the pin has to go through here. When you pull now, it's hooked in. And that's why I have this guy so pointy to catch that, to find it, feel it, catch it. Or if you don't catch it at all, it's, you can use a smaller one go in. but it's actually all pretty, Pretty simple uh, basics here. Now here the um, big four millimeter pin goes in. So here this goes in now. So now you have to, and um, I should actually, uh, what can get you sometimes, that's one thing I wanna show you. If you have the barrel with the extractor cut out, it will work. But if you have a barrel with a straight shaft, it will not work with the extractor if you put it in because it has no room to move. That's why I turned on those studs a taper, simulating the extractor cutout so it's easy for me. So now I can do this, otherwise it would hang up a little bit, could hang up a little bit on the threads at that part. So here now, find again my hole and put this pin in. All good, everything functions. Now I like to put actually the safety back in because it's uh, easier to do that now than after. You have just more room here. Try to find your holes here again. It's like three lengths of pins. This is the longest, of course, because it's the widest if you mix them up. Then this one is pretty long too. This one is naturally shorter, so this is the middle one goes in here, I feel it, uh, I actually made a mistake, it's too long, it sticks out on the other side, so that's for the trigger, so I grabbed the wrong one, must be this one. Here we go, yeah, I feel it, miss my finger on the back, it's all good. Now to get this on, we have to get that little hole into the spring and under that little shaft, it can be a little tricky, but it's no big deal. You got a little bit of a, so line it up, push it forward. Here we go, I got it. Now again, those pins here, they are just wonderful for that. I'll use it here, I do it sometimes backwards too, use it from the other side, but actually you can just put it in like this too, or put the pin in from the bottom. Test function, everything, it all clicks in over the pivot point. Here it's fixed. If you get here, it's a dead point here, and then as soon as you go over the pivot here, boom, it's down here, spring load. It's always held closed, like on fire, or it's held spring loaded on safety. Yeah, you see the hook coming down. So in order to put the, um, okay, now we'll put the spring housing in. This one here is relieved on both sides. On some older models, we had a mark here or something like that, that this is up if they weren't relieved, but we made them like, we just had one side relieved on the top, the bottom not, but now they're done like this, so they should be fine. So you put the spring in here and your sear. And again, the sear flat is here, that has to be on top. Here's a T for a no-brainer type of thing. So you can move it into different positions. If you have it right in the middle, you have to compress a spring the most, which is sometimes more difficult. I'll just, you know, it doesn't really matter. I put it a little bit open or something like that here. Hold it here. Use this wonderful tool. And that uh, just makes it easy. You can push it in because that spring has quite a bit of load, you know. Put it in here. Pull it out. 
center this a little bit. This goes right into the hammer, into that groove here. This is it. Now putting the trigger in, the best way to put the trigger in is put the safety on because once you put the trigger in, you can hold it here that it doesn't move around. So we'll do that here. So if sometimes you have to wiggle a little bit sideways that this thing positions itself around the trigger. Then the part is you have to compress the spring to that it gets in here behind here, this guy here. So you push the trigger all the way forward, put this pin here or a little screwdriver or whatever you like and put that trigger in. So it's in here now, it's almost perfect. You put this in. Everything works, good, yeah. So I'll leave it off like this, that it's not too much load on it. And then I'll put the, um, put the pin in here. You, I, I just do it from the top to show you. Usually I sometimes go from the other end or you could push the pin in from the other side, but safety on, then you can really hold it here. And I just hold it like that and do it. If, if you have problems, just put the pin in from underneath, not all the way through the guide pin and you can do it like that easily. Here we go. Mission accomplished, action put together. Another thing is, since this all works over pivot points, see here, if you, if you pull the trigger and you do this, the action will actually go, if you push it over the, the close and hold close, if it's cocked and you do this, push it, it'll actually open like that, which is kind of neat too. But it's just the way it works over this uh, pivot points here, the design. Uh, yeah, and if there would be barrel in here, I wouldn't point it at Mike right now because <laughs> just for safety, if there ever would be anything in there, you know. So here we go. <coughs> what are the most for function, that's it. Most yeah. common things that people have issues with when they contact you? Um, well, don't know where to start don't know where to stop, right? So if you do it this frequency, trigger, then you have to take the spring housing out. It's easy, if you do it backwards, you pull this out or whatever, you don't even get it out, you know what I mean? This is the only way really to do it. The only thing what you don't need to do is the safety and the hook. Um, you have to put it at one point in time, the way I do it when it's all empty, it's the easiest, but you couldn't really do anything. <laughs> But if you do it any other way, you got a spring-loaded thing in here, or you pull the, uh, some other pins or the hinge pin out of here, it just wouldn't work. If you do it in this frequency, it's really logic, um, then it works. Another thing where people had a lot of times problems with, after heat treating here, this firing pin bushing, I just got it, I have no idea, might be tight, right? Or if they want to take that apart and how to get that out. And if you take a regular um, pin punch any size, you will just not catch this thing. You can't hit that because the angle here is so, you know what I mean? It's so uh, goofy, it doesn't work. So this one here made up, that's a wonderful thing. This one is for all the sizes except the, um, the, uh, the mini and the mini max. For that I have one here which is like this, and you go in here, you know, because the firing pin bushing is smaller and everything, so it's easier to get at with a block. Actually, this guy here was longer too, but it broke off one day, I just doing something hard, and I just left it short, it worked short also, but that's a lot of times an issue to get the firing pin bushing out. Mm -hmm. yeah. If they're really tight, you know, lacquer in from Keller case hardening, which usually doesn't happen, but sinks when you heat treat something, heat it up red hot, throw it in water, color case hardening, sinks can move. Uh, and then sometimes it gets tight, or if something would be seized, I always put a little bit of oil or grease on it on assembly, uh, but uh, this thing was all oiled and stuff like that. So that's basically the major hookups people have. Uh, or they do something and flies around that's, because they don't find the spring, yeah. right? Uh, or something like that. But it's very simple. It's like very few parts actually, much simpler than 
any uh, break open or mm -hmm. other action with a lot more parts in there and 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 sears and fine stuff you know Spring. we actually need a a gunsmith uh, to do this because mm -hmm. a novice will just make a mess out of it yeah. or break a leaf spring or something like that or lose something. Uh, this thing is, is simple once you, if you know how, right? So, yeah. Excellent. Okay, well, thank you, Ralph. Mm -hmm. And I hope this answers most of your questions yeah. and prevents a lot of frustration. People were even contacting me because I, they know I had something to do with Huggins, but I couldn't really helped them. And what Ralph said uh, was the most relevant thing for the people that called me, they had already taken apart yeah. things. So they were talking to me on the phone about a theoretical situation where pins were already out, but mm -hmm. I didn't know which pins mm -hmm. were out. So I couldn't really help them, which I felt badly about. But hopefully this video, yeah. if you watch it carefully and maybe a couple of times, yeah. uh, some people have a box of parts right now that they can't do anything mm -hmm. with and don't want to send it here. Um, so this should work. I think that's a yeah. great idea. Oh yeah, Thanks. that will do it. <laughs> yeah.